welcome to Five News. I'm Sean Williams. Drug abuse, violence, inmates effectively in charge of some areas and staff hiding in locked offices. The extent of the chaos at Birmingham prison was revealed today as the government announced it was taking it over from the private firm G4S. There were riots at the jail in December 2016, but conditions have got even worse since then. Indeed, the chief inspector of prisons said he couldn't carry out an inspection on one wing because of the effect that drugs were having on him. From Birmingham, here's our chief correspondent, Tessa Chapman. And I'm right in HMP Birmingham, but live. December 2016, and one of Britain's biggest prisons was out of control. <laughs> Inmates filmed the chaos on banned mobile phones. Riot police brought the destruction to an end, but not the problems behind it. Today, a report found the jail is still overcrowded, squalid, violent and drug-ridden. The direction of travel was that prisoners were getting more and more influential on what was happening and staff were having less and less impact on what was going on on the wings. The inspectors found high levels of violence and widespread bullying, with some inmates saying they felt unsafe even behind locked doors. The report described appalling squalor, with blood, vomit and rat droppings found on the floor in communal areas. There was blatant drug trafficking, and drug use was so common, the inspector felt physically affected by substances in the air. The situation is so bleak, the government has taken control of the privately run jail, run by security firm G4S since 2011. One prison officer told me he and his colleagues are relieved action's been taken. Recently quite a few members of staff have a little stress, uh, ruined their lives, and, and I think uh, we will be supported and looked after uh, far better in the public sector again. We seem to be forgotten about because we're behind a large wall. Former inmate Tanea Sam is frustrated earlier warnings weren't heeded. Prisoners are able to do whatever they want to do and uh, drugs are being smoked just every and anywhere. After serving time, the reformed gang member went back inside to work with inmates. He has seen the conditions and their consequences. If we keep them in inhumane conditions where violence and drugs are thriving, then what do we expect for them when they come out? They're going to carry on with such behaviour. The government has installed a new governor to run the prison and 30 extra prison officers. 300 inmates will be moved to other jails. Drastic action to counter a desperate situation that will raise more questions about the future of private prisons. Well, Tessa's still at HMP Birmingham now. And Tessa, this isn't the only privately run prison, so the government must be concerned about other facilities, are they? That's right, Sean. Birmingham is one of 14 privately run prisons. This was the first one to be transferred into private hands back in the 1990s. And critics of privatisation say that this proves that the idea is flawed. The government doesn't agree with that, though. The prison's minister, Rory Stewart, said today Birmingham faces its own particular set of challenges but must start to live up to standards seen elsewhere. So the government will step in but insists that G4S will foot the bill. The intention, though, is for it to be transferred back into private hands after six months if sufficient progress is made. So the government says this is not a privatisation issue, but it certainly reignites that debate, but also a broader one about the state of our prisons, particularly the drugs problem. There is much to be done. All right, Tessa, thank you. On TV, Lunchtime News, with Lucrezia Millerini. Good afternoon. It is a dramatic and unusual intervention at one of England's largest prisons. The government today forced to take control of privately run HMP Birmingham. Drug abuse, serious violence and a total lack of staff control have all increased at the prison, which in 2016 saw the worst outbreak of rioting at an English jail in more than two decades. And in his damning review, the chief inspector of prisons says it was the worst he had ever been to, claiming somebody must have been asleep at the wheel. With the latest, here's Martin Stew. Patron P. Birmingham, but live footage as it's unfolding.
It was the worst prison riot for more than two decades. In December 2016, HMP Birmingham was overrun by 500 inmates. Drug-fueled violence leaving physical and mental scars to those who were inside. Some inmate pulled two matches to my door and lit it. I start crying, you know, start beating on the door for help, someone to help me, you know, but there was no one. Lessons were supposed to have been learnt, but the chief inspector of prisons found they had not. Whilst inmates no longer physically have the keys, in many respects they still run parts of the prison. The prisoners were basically, uh, in some cases, doing exactly as they wanted. In a damning letter to the government, he also wrote that the smell of cannabis was so strong, he felt physically affected by the drugs in the atmosphere. It was difficult to find prison officers, and when they did, some were asleep or had locked themselves in their own offices. And inmates were terrified of attacks because those perpetrating the violence could do so with impunity. Now the government is taking charge, temporarily replacing G4S, the private company which runs it. There is a shared responsibility, which includes me and the government and the private sector company that was running this prison. But that's why, having seen this problem, we're announcing a step in where, very unusually, we're sending in our own management team. G4S says it welcomes the intervention, describing Birmingham as an inner-city remand prison with exceptionally high levels of violence. The Prison Officers Association says it's proof we need renationalisation. Private companies will cut corners, and the corners is usually safety, so they won't have enough staff to respond to an incident. A new governor and extra staff are being drafted in. 300 prisoners will be moved out. The minister promising to resign if he doesn't turn around failing prisons within 12 months. Martin Stew, ITV News. And well, let's go to Angus Walker now, who is in Birmingham Force. It's lunchtime. Angus, how has the situation been allowed to spiral out of control for so long before today's intervention? Yes, it's the question of the day, because even when those riots happened in December 2016, it came as no surprise. This prison has had a notorious reputation for many, many years. When the riots happened, Everyone knew there were deep-seated problems within this particular jail. Staff were not in control. Drug-taking was openly tolerated. There was violence, bullying, and it was increasing. Six inmates have died in this prison this year alone. Effectively, the government tried everything. Today, what we're talking about is the last resort. Angus, can you give us any sense of the atmosphere inside the prison today? Yes, I've been hearing from people who are inside the prison today. One said that uh, there was still open drug taking going on. Members of staff not able to enter some wings because the stench of drug taking is so strong that they themselves start to feel the effects that they can't actually do their jobs. In some cases, that's medical staff trying to help prisoners who need treatment. Others talk about a volatile atmosphere. Every prisoner has had a letter under the door today telling them what's going on and there are rumours rife within the prison there'll be some sort of retribution perhaps and that just tells you everything about the sort of toxic atmosphere that persists here there's a huge task ahead for the teams who've been sent in today to try to turn this prison around all right angus at hmp birmingham thank you